guys, and welcome back to Fujit Split with me, Fujit. Okay, so I had a little bit of a time off following doing all the streams for the Blitz Cup, but I'm back, and with the Christmas festive season fastly approaching us, we have got snow globes back in the game. Now, what can we get with the snow globes? Well, there are loads of tanks, as you can see here. There's the Caro 40T, the Strav K, which is what we are going to be talking about and a load of others but we are going to be talking about the strab because this is a very interesting tank well, at least i think it is and it's a tank that if you took a Kranwagen and had an illicit affair with an fv4202 you get the strab k so what is the tank all about well let's have a look so this is the strab k this is what it looks like and basically it's effectively the hull of a Kranwagen married with the turret of effectively an FV4202. So you would assume that it's basically a medium, but it's not. It's actually a heavy. So, it, But it's more like a heavy um, to be honest with you. And we'll get into the stats of why I think it's more of a heavy um in a moment. But I think it's a great looking tank and it certainly gives a lot of opportunities. I mean, if you're one of those players who likes the Kranwagen or you like the FB4202, then this is like a nice sort of in-between tank. It's not strictly a heavy, although it is strictly a heavy because of the hull and because of its HP and armor, but it plays more like a medium. And I'll be honest with you, I particularly like the gameplay on this tank. Let's have a look at its overall stats. Okay, so here we are looking at the stats of the Strav K. And already you can see that its hit points 2,438. Pretty decent frontal armor, both turret and hull, although the hull with the hundreds is a bit. Eh. But don't remember, remember this it's a pike nose, okay? It's like the clan wagon. The sides, they're not too bad, they're not exactly thick. And if you try to side scrape in this thing, well, more fool you. And the rear is pretty, pretty terrible. View range isn't too bad, 279 meters. For a heavy tank, that's pretty decent. Cavalry concealment, mm, not that good, but then again, it is a heavy, and heavy tanks are not exactly the most camo effective tanks out there. Looking at the rate of fire in the DPM here, well, we've got a DPM of 3,180 with a reload time of just over six and a half seconds. It has an average penetration of 272 on its standard AP, 325 on its APCR, and 58 on its HE. Damage, wow, it is a heavy, but it's not dishing out massive alpha. 350 on its AP, 300 on its APCR, and 440 on its HE. But like I said, this is more like a heavy um, rather than a heavy. Aim time, just shy of three seconds at 2.8, and dispersion. Well, it's not too bad considering that it's meant to be a heavy tank. Gun depression, 9 degrees. Elevation is 20. Maneuverability is not too bad here, but it's not too shabby. It's got a top speed going forward to 47, 16 going backwards with an average of 33. Power to weight ratio and haul turn rate's not too shabby either, and the haul crossing is okay. But let's now compare that to the tank that it's based on. Effectively, the Kranwagen and the FV. So we have the Strav K on the, on the far right hand side with the FV4202 on the far left. And automatically you can see that the Strav K has a lot more hit points. It also has better frontal armor than the other tanks. Although the FV4202 does have better all armor frontally. When you go down to the view range, well, the view range on the FV4202 is 265. The Kranwagen 250 and this thing a whopping 279. You can see, however, that the camouflage is slightly better than that of the Kran, but not as good as that of the FV4202. So let's have a look at this DPM or this damage or the fire. As you can see, the Strav K has got 3,180, considerably more than the Kranwagen and slightly better than the FV4202. The reload time on the Strav K is also particularly nice, 6.6. .6. Now don't forget, this is meant to be a heavy tank, whereas the FV4202 is a medium. And 
you know, one of the benefits of the British tanks is that they've got a pretty super duper reload. Yet the Strad K is beating that FV4202, a heavy that loads quicker than a medium. Then we have, I mean, obviously you, ca you can't look at the cram because it's an auto reload and you've got the 13 seconds, the 9 seconds and the 8 seconds. Looking at those penetrations, again, the Strav is topping the bill there. 272 on its standard AP. Compare that to the Kran, 258, and that of the FV at 255. Moving down, looking at the average damage, again, we've got 350 average damage being dished out by the Strav K. Okay, that's less than the Kran wagon at 400, but it's similar, in fact, it's exactly the same as the FB4202 with its 350. Obviously, the Hesh on the 4202 does help considerably, what with its 440 compared to the APCR of only 300. But because it's a similar, it's the same gun effectively, 105 mil, you've still got 440 on the HE of the Strav K. Moving down, you then got the gun depression. Wow, the gun depression on the FB402 is 10 degrees, whereas that of the Strav K is 9. And the Kranwagen, wow, the Kranwagen, look at it. I mean, it's it's got 9 degrees as well. It's the same. Look at the aim time, though. The aim time on the FV is 4.2 seconds. The aim time on the Kranwagen is 4 seconds. The aim time on the Strav K is a absolutely crazy 2.2 eight seconds that is just madness because it really does change it i mean don't forget this is the same gun as the fb 402 for all intensive purposes okay yeah it's got much better aim time and it's the same hull for all intents and purposes of the clan wagon so this tank whilst being a heavy is really a vastly improved heavy um now, if we then move across to its mobility, well, the top speed on the Strav K is 47. That is considerably slower than the FV4202, but this is a heavier tank. The Kranwagen's only got 30. I mean, the average speed on the FV4202 is 38. Compare that to the average speed of 33, that of the Strav K, with the Kranwagen coming in at nearly 24. You can see there the weight of the Strav K is 42.13, whereas the weight of the FV is only 40. So that makes a massive difference. All in all, it's not a bad tank, considering it's meant to be a heavy. And it is comparable to, as I said, the FV 402 and the Kranwagen, of which it is an amalgamation of those two tanks. So moving across now to its consumables, what I'm running this tank with at the moment is the adrenaline, because why wouldn't you? I mean, that's just common sense. I'm also running it with the improved engine power boost, because this one does come with an improved engine power boost. And then I've got the multi-restoration restore pack, because why wouldn't you do that either? Moving then to the actual provisions, while well, I'm running the grilled salmon, that just increases my crew's ability overall. And you can see there the view range goes up, the damage goes up, reload time comes down, aiming time comes down, dispersion is improved, etc., etc. And then trying it with the enhanced sandbag armor, it's only given me 136 additional hit points, but I thought I'd give it a bash, see if it makes any difference. And I've then got the protective kit, because again, why wouldn't you? Moving across, well, this is the ammunition loadout that I've currently got. 36 AP, 15 APCR, and 5 HE. Because, well, that's just my normal loadout. It has a capacity of 56, so it's not too shabby in that regard. Equipment-wise, well, I've loaded it with calibrated showers for the moment. It gives me 13 millimeters of extra penetration, which I think is fantastic. I don't really need the gun rammer on this because... The reload time is just fantastic uh, as it is at the moment with six seconds, well, just over six and a half seconds. So I can use this with calibrated showers without breaking a sweat. Uh, then got the defense system because why wouldn't you? And then moving down to the improved optics gives me almost an additional 20 meters. That's bringing it up to the 279 meters. Then I've got the enhanced gun laying device because, hey, why not? I don't need the supercharge. Um, why would I? I can just use this because look at that aim time, 2.8 seconds, brilliant. 
Then got the enhanced armor, four percent in the hall and the turret because hey, I don't need the additional hit points. I've got the sandbag armor. Then move across the the engine accelerator, just gives me better boosts all around. I've then got the vertical stab because it brings my aim time down again. And then I've just got toolbox and I end consumables. And that is how I'm running it at the moment. I'm not saying that's perfect. I'm not saying it's ideal. It's just the way I'm just running it right now. So let's jump in and have a look at the armor inspector and the armor profile of this tank. It is facing off a, against a Type 71 here with standard AP ammunition loaded. And as you can see, frontally, it's all pretty wide open. It's like green, green, green. But, you know, this is not a tank that you want to side scrape in, to be fair. It's, it's not that type of tank. But if you move it along, I mean, you can see it's pretty empty. But when you start going haul down, which is what this tank is designed to do, with that nine degrees of gun depression, you can now see the pike nose really coming into play. Okay, the sides of the turret cheeks are pretty, pretty open as well. But at the end of the day, most tanks' cheeks are open. What this thing is meant to do, it's a haul down beast. Nine degrees may not seem a lot, but believe me, it really is, and it can be. And if you wiggle and jiggle it, you're going to make that pike nose do some work if you uh, if you really try. And if you turn the turret, nothing's really going to happen. And if you're one of those people who love side scraping, then don't even bother to try in this tank because it ain't going to help you. Not in the slightest, because the pike nose just doesn't allow it. Armor profile-wise, therefore, it's not too bad. As I said, it's the amalgamation of a crown wagon and an FB4202. So you've got... You've got the benefits of both to an extent. A pretty decent turret, a pretty decent haul, with a great haul down capability. But all that pales into insignificance. What's this tank actually like to play in a game? So here we are on Yamata Harbour, rolling out in the Stravkin. We've already taken the A-cap, and I've rolled through a lot of the game already, because you don't need to see it. The thing about this tank is... For a heavy tank, as I keep saying, it is really a heavy I mean, It's got pretty, pretty decent mobility. And it's got a pretty decent gun. And you need to remember this, okay? You need to remember that you can get to places that a lot of the heavies can't get to. And you need to keep in mind, it's more of the FB4202 style of gameplay. So if you like the FB4202, you're going to love this tank. Also, if you're one of those players that loves the clan wagon, Again, you're not going to go too wrong in this one. Um, the reason being, okay, we all know that the Crown Wagon has got an absolutely solid turret. This one doesn't. But what this one does have that the Crown Wagon doesn't have is a pretty good reload and pretty decent mobility. So if you're one of those type of players who loves the Crown Wagon but struggles with its turn rate or its DPM, then this tank is going to help you bridge that gap. If you're one of those players who loves the FB4202, again, this tank is going to help you bridge that gap where you struggle in that tank because of its poor armor profile or because of the use of the Hesh ammunition, which everybody has to do. I must admit, I like this tank. I thought this was a pretty, pretty nice tank. And, you know, I'd love to get this tank in my garage because I can foresee that it'd be one of those tanks that I will play a lot. I, I, I do like the FB4202, I've got a great player in it, and I do like the clan wagon. So, with the introduction of this tank, albeit it is a collector and it's not a tech tree tank, I can foresee good things about this one. And I particularly like the way it plays. As I said, I play it pretty much like I would play an FB4202, and I don't overcommit in some games. However, I, 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 I have to admit, when I review tanks, I, I purposely try to play them a lot more aggressively than I normally would, if I'm being honest. We have a pretty decent turn of speed there, pretty decent gain, 2,200 damage. We blocked a little bit, but not much. We didn't block anything, actually. I'm lying. Um, we get a, a pretty decent first class for our troubles. We take two kills, and that wasn't a bad rollout in this tank. We get some pretty decent credits as well, 53,000, and that was my first game in the tank. Second from the top there, I'm not too unhappy with that. Here we go, rolling out on Winter Malinovka, and again, I've rushed through a full minute of this game because we're just getting into positions. And the thing I like about this tank, as I said, is its turn of speed, especially for a heavy tank. 
The gun is nice. It's similar to the FP402. It's pretty accurate, and you're pretty. You've got some pretty decent penetration. You're not dishing out that massive alpha damage that you would with a normal heavy tank. Although you are sort of in the territory of the uh, Type 71. Let's be honest. But the thing is, when you've got a gun this nice, when you've got a reload this beautiful, and when you've got you know the ability to get to a place pretty pretty quickly that overall the tank is just lovely to play if you play it as i say like a medium tank more like the fp 402 you're gonna have oodles of fun in it i mean i played it this morning and you know i only played three games in it and i loved every single minute to be perfectly honest with you unfortunately i am still struggling with ping quite a lot of ping but that didn't stop me from still having a good time in the tank. And this is the thing, I mean, it's a pretty decent penetration. And the aim time is just to die for. Hence the reason why I'm getting some of these great shots into that bottom plate of those 60 TPs. And we've already just, we've done like a thousand damage here. So we're not setting the world on fire. We finally take him out. And now we're going to be able to push forward. And this is the thing, I mean, the mobility is just lovely. And again, if you're one of those FB4202 players, you're going to love this tank. There is absolutely no escaping it. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I see this tank being played a lot more than some of the other sort of premiums and collectors out there, especially in tier 10. I think you're going to see more people playing this than the B, more people playing this than uh, the AMX30B. Because all round, it's just a beautiful tank. I mean, we finished there on 2,400. We bounce 1,200. We take three kills. And for our troubles, we get another first class. Which, you know, is just fantastic. I'll take that every day of the week and twice on the Sunday. We're not doing too badly in it. And you can see the mobility, the rotations, and what you can do with this tank is pretty nice. And again, it was a nice tank. But let's have a look at one last replay to really show what this tank can actually do. This is the last game and this is me rolling out on Falls Creek. And I looked at their team lineup and decided, wow, they're gonna have at least two tanks, the TVP, which you can see along with the 907 going towards this A cap. So I decided to go to the A cap and I'm gonna play this one slightly more aggressive than I played the others. I'm just gonna try and force the hand of the enemy's mediums here to try and see what I can do with this thing. So I'm already spotted, I'm gonna take the uh, A cap and I'm gonna to hope to try and get the TVP or the 907 highlighted. There's the TVP, the 907's in the corner. So I I'm telling people, you know, attack this tank, attack that tank. And I'm just gonna try and whittle them down. You can see there we're being aggressive on the TVP. He's gonna be gone, he's gone. That's their, one of their dangerous tanks out of the game. Now I've capped, I'm now gonna just rush onto the 907. I'm gonna use the mobility of this thing, so drop that double adrenaline, get the mobility working, push round onto this 907, and hopefully I can out DPM him quite easily. And with that aim time, I don't need it when I'm this close, but I'll be able to put these 300 rolls into him. And there's not much this poor old 907 can do, not with this penetration and not with this reload. I mean, he's just being whittled down already we've done over a thousand damage we've blocked 310 we take a kill and we take a base now we're going to push onto the fp4 uh, 183 we're going to call it out and tell everybody to focus their guns on it and that's exactly what we're doing so we're able to get right around the back of them flank round them and i'm not going to finish them off somebody else will but now we're up to 1600 damage and the game is only in the first two minutes they've got four tanks left try and put one into the jaeger try and track him Alas, don't get it, but more of a snapshot than anything else. I'm not too shabby and unhappy about that. See the IS-4? He's very healthy. Let's therefore push onto the IS-4. Tell the team to push onto the IS-4, which we do. Uh, let's put one into his bottom plate. Look at the accuracy of this gun. It's just absolutely lovely. And I really can't wait to try and get this tank, get this tank into my garage. And the mobility, look, I mean, the IS-4 just haven't got a chance. This is heavy on heavy. It's more like that medium, like I'm telling you, trap the uh, 04. Now we can push down onto uh, the Super Conqueror and maybe the Jaeger-Roo. Again, uh, coming a little bit hard. Stucky, I've done 2,700, bounce 310, taken one kill, capped one base, and we're having a great, great time. 
It's three against five. We've got this one in that. In the in in, in in you know we've won this game. There's no two ways about it. But I want to show you this. So I'm going to push onto the super conk, and I'll show you how good this armor is. Boom! I bounce him for 400. Okay, the bat chat clears up because I couldn't get the gun down quickly enough. But that's a big bounce, 400. Now I'm going to push onto the Jaegeru, and again my ping wasn't great. But, uh, you know, I don't understand how I, this shot that I pull off in a minute just doesn't do anything. You actually see it go through the tank. There it goes. And all I do is break his tracks. I'm not too unhappy about that because I'm going to get um, the uh, damage assist for tracking him. No point me pushing on the 04. The bat chap will go and finish him off. We finished the game on 2,738. We only took one kill, but we did a lot of assistance damage. And we take a base. We therefore get a lovely little golden M. Ta da! And that just goes to show what this tank can do. You know, don't be shy with it. It is 125,000 credits. Very nice. Don't be shy with this one. It's a lovely little tank. Don't get the top damage. The bat chap does that. I mean, he went around just clearing everything up. But I'm happy with that game. That was only the third game I played. So I am very, very happy with the state of this tank. Yeah, it's annoying that it's, you know, basically a collector that you've got to try and get in a snow globe. I get that. I understand that. But you know what? If anybody does get this tank, and you, like I keep saying, if you're one of those FV4202 players, you're going to absolutely adore this thing. This is a beautiful tank. Now, it's a collector. So remember, guys, as a collector, it can be nerfed. And the chances are this one will, because at the moment, I think it's just slightly too strong. Anyway, that's been my take on the new tier 10 collector, the Strav K. Sits in the European line, and I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to the game. Again, it comes in snow globes, so you know, don't go throwing all your money at it. It will come around again, no doubt, at some time in the future. Uh, I mean, the snow globes, you can get them for either gold or XP. Just be careful, guys. Don't start spending all your hard-earned cash, etc., etc., in the vain attempt to try and get this tank. Because I don't know what the drop rate is on the snow globe for actually getting this one. But there's a lot of tanks in the snow globes. So this is the pinnacle tank. This is the, the, the top tank. So the chances of getting it are stacked against you. But don't despair. It will come around again in the future. So don't gamble on trying to get this one. Give it a bash, try and get the snow globes for free if you can. And if you get the tank, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It's a beautiful tank. As I said, it is a collector, so the chances of it being nerfed are available. And at the moment, I think this one's a little bit too strong. I wouldn't say it's OP, I wouldn't say it's broken, but I would say it's a little bit too strong for what it is. That the aim time and the reload time are just edging it out there to be perfectly honest and frank with you and when you've got a heavy tank that is outperforming a medium tank and it's effectively the same gun and the same turret then you have to sort of scratch your head and wonder will wargaming change this one anyway i've been fujit that has been the strav k the collector that is coming in snow globes which are now available by all means comment in everything below and until the next time guys remember stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy Christmas and happy tanking to everybody because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Having fun, guys, and being happy. And I hope to see you all again soon. That's it from me.